really overwhelmed. What we wanted to do is to build a home for respect for the competitors and especially for the family and friends. And I think we are, did this very successfully. All the reactions I get full of uh, warm heart. Mm -hmm. So I'm really overwhelmed. I'm happy, but it's not done. It's not done give yet. Give me a day, please. I, I will give you a day. Uh, I remember we met a few months ago at the trustees meeting right. in I London. Was, I was a little bit nervous. <laughs> Well, it didn't show, and you gave an excellent presentation. Um, what, what you've achieved here, was that what you envisaged back then? Is it, is it better? Is it exactly what it was? I couldn't uh, imagine that it will be so good as it is now here, because there, it was not clear uh, how many people will visit the games. I'm so proud of my team to realize all things like this. We couldn't imagine before what will happen. The weather is great. This was a responsibility for the IGF. You spoke when you visited about sometimes the complicated relationship with the military and the war in Germany, and how well the games would be supported. Uh, the crowds have been fantastic. The yeah. atmosphere, particularly in the Mercosur Arena, has been outstanding. I never have seen this. So there were a lot of people. It was crowded, and there were military personnel with students and visitors from the town or from the area here. And it was great, they're all sitting together celebrating and supporting the competitors. Couldn't be better, I've never seen this in my military life and I'm for 43 years in, in service now. It's a one time in my life to think what is happening here. And I'm responsible, therefore I'm a little bit proud too. I, and you should be proud. Just talk a little bit more about A Home for Respect and, and how that came about as the sort of the title for these games. Oh, <laughs> it was exactly four years and three months ago when we uh, sit together and thought about our motto or uh, our brand for the for the bidding phase and uh, it was a monday morning and my team member came and said oh i was colonel in this time i have an idea uh, in german language this was we would uh, respect ein zuhause or ein zuhause für den respect then he translated it in english and that's it it was born a home for respect and i'm really proud that it's still here it was the, the idea for the bidding but Everywhere here it is, it's still alive and all the people, the competitors, the spectators, they accepted this. And sometimes these slogans for events are just slogans, but this, this has a real meaning. And for you as a military man for, for many decade, decades, um, seeing the community here amongst veterans from across the world must be something which just warms your heart. Yeah, it's so special for me because we wanted to build bridges between the military and the society and to the situation and standing here, standing day by day with thousands of visitors and uh, competitors in the family and friends. And so I think it couldn't be better. It's much more than expected. Well, look for all of us. Thank you for the hard work you've put in. I know it's not done yet, but congratulations. Thank you, Jonathan. It was a pleasure to meet you. And thank you for having me here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, he's a delightful man for a Brigadier General. I imagined he'd be quite fierce, but he isn't at all. And uh, I'd certainly follow his orders. He's certainly a star of the games. The competitors are, as I've said, stars of the games. But there's also been some unusual stars, uh, four-legged versions. And Lane has been to find out more. So, the, the, because there's so many different dogs on site, um, and, and th there's big ones, there's small ones. So tell us a little bit more about yeah. why, what's the difference between a therapy dog and, um, and a service dog, an assistant dog? Yes. So, you know, when a person um, is wounded or is having uh, a difficulty, this person um, needs a dog for just his personal needs. Mm -hmm. And so a dog is trained to meet that need, to help that one person uh, in the life, to, to share the life with others and have a good, has a good life. Mm -hmm. You know, but a therapy dog is a completely different thing. The therapy dog is a dog who... Um, is living as a family dog with his owner who's having um, a profession in a social uh, or theoretical uh, area. Thank you so much, Davina. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, I think I found my location and my new friend for today. No more studio time. Back to you, Jonathan. Yeah, thanks, Lane. There'll be more from Lane later on. He spoke to uh, Sam Ryder, who's going to be performing in the closing ceremony. We'll hear that a little bit later on. Now, as part of that so closing ceremony, one of the, the most important bits is the handing over, the ceremonial handing over of the flag uh, from Dusseldorf to Vancouver Whistler. I'm delighted to welcome into the studio now two men who will be very much involved with that handover, uh, co-team captains of Germany and of Canada. We've got Thomas Kroner 
and Bernard Casey. I hope I got that right. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, you're, you're welcome, both of you. And of course, you'll be on stage very shortly. So thanks for taking the time. Thomas, let me start with you. Um, how proud have you been of what Germany and Dusseldorf has done at these games? We are very proud as the Germans to host all the nations here as our guests. We try to make them good games, try to have good talks, try to make the Invictus Games family growing up. Keep in mind what's the goal. It's all come together. It's not about winning medals. It's about yeah, talk about, say thank you to the family and friends which supporting us on our way to get a better life, better life quality. And yeah, it was an honor to have all the guests here. I have a lot of talks, emotional, sad ones, also valuable ones. And I like every second during this week here with all our friends from all over the world. And Bernard, you, you would echo that. You've had a pretty decent welcome from the hosts. Yes, <laughs> uh, th uh, I mean, our brothers and sisters in ours from the German uh, population has been, uh, I mean, it's been awesome so far this week uh, th from all the citizens throughout Germany and also the, just a heartfelt welcome that we felt throughout. The, the crowds have been fantastic as well. And that was one of the things I picked up with, with the general there. Uh, you know, there's obviously a, a complicated relationship with war here in Germany and a little bit nervous perhaps um, about how well it would be received, but he was so thrilled at the way the crowds have come, the way the crowds have supported and, and, and has made a home for respect. Yes, the home for respect, even in the ceremony uh, starting the games, we have 20,000 viewers, visitors, and today for the closing ceremony we will have around 17,000, which is an honor for all wounded soldiers participating here to give them a respect for home. Uh, I've watched a little bit of the, the rehearsals for the, the flag handover. There's some very emotional piano music. You're, you're moving out with the flags. There'll be a, a, a handover. It's going to be a, a bit of a moment, isn't it? It will. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can feel the tears welling up. But just the rehearsals, the real thing is going to be something, that ceremonial handover between Germany and Canada. For sh sharing this moment, uh, not only for, for everyone that's here, we also do it for our brothers and sisters who are not here today with us. Uh, and also to represent those uh, the, the voice for everyone throughout the world as well. Um, let's just talk personally a little bit about what Invictus means to both of you. If uh, I can start with you, Thomas, first of all, a little bit of your history and story and why you're competing here. Oh, I'm, um, <coughs> I get it wounded in 99 in my Kosovo mission uh, where I was working as a diplomat and uh, I was in that time a pilot and uh, for me it was like putting everything in a, in a suitcase and put things on it so I'm not working on my problems and after almost 19 years somebody opened the suitcase and world become to another and nothing was possible. I go in the darkness, getting social activities slowed down. I was, like say, in the darkness. And with the diagnose in 2018, I know where and how to work on my problem. I do it now, and sport is one of the activities which helped me out to, to get better life quality. And at the end, my doctors and even the sport group in Warendorf who bring me here by training um, and now I'm almost back not in normal life but I accept what I have I can work on my sickness I even I have a strong partner which helped me out which is not normal because I see a lot of friends comrades where the marriage is broken down getting divorced and they are alone and have more than one problem there so sport makes me stronger and even what I feel here, what I receive here on the emotional way to get all the, 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 the nice talks, the guests you have here. And I think you can say the same. It's so valuable and I will keep that for months, maybe for years. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and even to be now a part of a family, I made it to two. So because I oh, am, yeah, I yeah. am now a part of this great family and I'm pretty proud. I'm, I cannot tell you how much I'm proud. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing to witness here from as an outsider uh, what it would be like to be part of it is, is incredible. Bernard, I think your story is not dissimilar. It's, it's very similar. <laughs> I mean, uh, multiple mission sets that we go through and then 
finally that unloading of uh, emotion and, and realizing what we've gone through. Uh, but however, what brings us back our strength, I would say, is sharing that with our, our, our fellow ill and injured veterans and still serving members and, and to be that voice to advocate as well and to tell people it, 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 if you if you need a break to have take a knee there's no shame in that so and it's very nice to see also here at the Invictus Games the culmination and also the convergence of our three families I always say our biological families mm -hmm. our team families and our Invictus families so now that we converge and we've we've made those contacts and those those friendships uh, that last uh, <laughs> forever I mean you cannot put words to that uh, only emotions and uh, w one thing that's nice to see is everybody within the Invictus community has er we all have everyone's back as well. I, I great happiness, great. No, go ahead. Yeah, just let me mention one point you already picked it up is that we are getting helped out of our sickness, our darkness by doing sports, but there are a lot of people still left in the darkness. So mm -hmm. maybe I announce a word to everyone look left, look right, and see if somebody is changing. Go give his hand, take him to the doctor, and maybe he get a chance to, to get a better life. Mm -hmm. I, I think the Invictus is a pro profound inspiration, not just to, to, to veterans, but to anybody, because you are very open about the traumas that you've mm -hmm. had, and, in, and maybe it's invisible injuries. Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. the thing. Well, let's start to look forward a little bit, because next in line, we're going to Canada. Yes, How much are you looking forward to that? How much are yeah. you looking forward to welcoming us, as Thomas and the Germans have welcomed We're, we're ready to, uh, to, to welcome the world uh, back home. Uh, we're, we're very looking forward to 2025. Uh, first time that we'll have uh, adaptive winter sports as yeah, well yeah. for the game. So it's um, uh, a multiple set of firsts. Um, but we're very looking forward to host everyone and uh, especially winter games as well. Yeah. So, yes. that should be really Look, guys, thanks for coming to speak to us. Uh, good luck with the ceremony tonight. I know it's going to be very emotional. It's been yes. a delight. Well, thank you for thank you very much, much Jonathan, for really having enjoyed us. It. Yes. Okay. Well, next up, it is, yeah, it's just great friendship there. Well, next up, it is Canada, Vancouver, Whistler, and I caught up with the CEO of that uh, Games, which obviously is coming up in two years' time, Peter Lawless. So, Peter, two years out, how are you We're feeling? 18 oh, months, wait. actually. You've got a countdown clock, have you? It is, in fact, 512 days, so yes, I do. Okay, no time to relax then. <laughs> no, not much. How's the trip been here then? It, it's been fantastic. You know, you come to events like this and it really immerses you in why you're doing this. You see the competitor, you see the friends and the family, and it really sort of fills your cup for when you go back and you have to do some of the hard work. I mean, sure, the atmosphere here, I think everybody's talked about it. It is, it really is quite eye-opening. You're cheering one minute, you're crying the next. The Invictus Games does bring something very different, doesn't it, to the sports calendar? Yeah, it's, it's almost pure sport, and it's, it's beyond sport. It's, it's, it's purpose with sport, where it's not about the competition, it's not about the medals, it's not about the performance. It's about the journey the competitor and their family have gone through. And certainly for us, we're talking about a shared journey, and we're really trying to emphasize how, how when the competitor was injured or, or whatever it was, uh, there's no invisible injuries at home. So the whole journey, you see the tears of the family, and their tears of joy, tears of sadness. Uh, you're going to bring something different to the Invictus Games. They've got the, the mountains. <laughs> they're, they're calling. They're calling. Um, so just tell us about what Vancouver Whistler is going to look like, and particularly that whole winter sport dynamic. Yeah, we're super excited about that. So we're the first ever version of the Invictus Games to bring in winter. So we're bringing in some games of ice and snow. We're going to go downhill skiing. We're going to go cross-country skiing. We're going to have wheelchair curling for everybody to do. And I'm really excited. We're going to do skeleton. Head first down the bobsled track. You know, this is going to be magic. It's in two different cities, so we're doing the traditional summer sports that are played indoors, like wheelchair basketball, wheelchair uh, rugby, uh, sitting volleyball, indoor rowing, so swimming, those are all there. But yeah, going up to Whistler, one of the world's iconic mountains, for four days, we're going to coach, we'll get some Paralympic coaches and Olympic coaches, we're going to train the nations, and we're going to put on a show like no one's seen. I mean, look, you, you've given yourself a challenge. I mean, coming here to Dusseldorf and seeing what they've done, which is fantastic, but this is just summer sports. To essentially have two, two games, yeah. a winter and a summer Paralympics at the same time. Yeah. You're a busy man. We, we are, but you know, we, we believe passionately in what we're doing. So the purpose behind adding winter sport is to say to the world and the competitors and all of those that are not yet competitors, no matter where you are in the world, no matter the weather, no matter the season, get outside. Outdoor adventurous sport is good for your health. So just because it gets bad outside, health and recovery shouldn't stop. So you can do it year round. 
because uh, home, uh, home for respect is the slogan here. Is there something that particularly the angle that you want to bring to Vancouver Whistler? Absolutely, just two things, shared journey, because we're really emphasizing the whole family's journey. It's the competitor as well as their spouse, their child. There's no invisible injuries at home. So we're trying to make sure that we're, we're doing something not just for the competitor, but for the family. So it's a shared journey. And we're very in touch with our indigenous people in Canada. And we're trying to be really mindful of what we can learn in the practices and teachings of our indigenous nations. And so we're gonna to paddle together. So shared journey is what we're doing and we're paddling together. That's how we're going to do it because no one gets anywhere alone. Peter, thanks very much. Thank Good luck, you. look forward to seeing you in Vancouver Whistler. I look forward to it. 512. 512. Good luck. Thank you. You have to say, I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, that interview took place at Team Canada House. Uh, it really was spectacular, some of the scenery, both down by Vancouver and up at Whistler, uh, and the idea of maybe doing the skeleton as well. I think it's going to be really awesome. But we mustn't get ahead of ourselves because there's still the closing ceremony to go here. Rita Aurora, also Sam Ryder. A little bit earlier on, Lane sat in this seat and he spoke to Sam. And it happened, uh, rather unfortunately, while Rita Aurora was doing a dress rehearsal. So it was a little bit noisy. Sam. How's it Thank going, you Pat? so much, man. Thank you so much for stopping by. I know you are extremely busy. Mate, stop. Pleasure. Absolute pleasure. You've Thanks had for a phenomenal us. past few years as well. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, so tell me about how the, how the journey's been in the last couple of years. Um, good. Lots of belief, like you got on your Ted Lasso. But I, I've yeah. got one of those. I should have worn mine today <laughs> as well. But yeah, lots of belief, man. Lots of um, faith. Lots of gratitude. Lots of um, you know. I just get to enjoy this journey with my powers. They're like there on the other side of that glass Respect. and it's just wicked man we get to enjoy this whole journey together you know this it's, is it's it. a blessing man and here we are now in Dusseldorf Germany yes. at the Invictus Games we can hear Rita doing her yeah, thing yeah. in the background doing an amazing cover actually another yeah. British legend Fatboy Slim it's yeah mate, she's smashing it I'm just yeah just listening in like, that is nice yeah, right it's a wicked voice man it's so nice. when it comes to obviously covers and and doing versions as well that's something that you're prolific in Yes. What, what, what do you prefer? What, what's your favourite artist that you, you like to cover? Um, I think to cover, I love singing Queen. I love singing um, Stevie Wonder. Uh, a lot of Motown and soul music, you know, like it's just got a lot of, it's just got spirit in it. And it's, um, it's if you're going to cover someone else's song, you've got to turn up with conviction. Because yeah. otherwise there's no, you've got to try and like find your way into what they were feeling when yeah. they sung that song. And that's, that's the challenge. And then, um, try and use what you learn there in your own music and like it's about connection in it like with um you know singing into a room like tonight with 50, strangers yeah. trying to find a way to connect with them singing and she's going for it now yeah <laughs> well this is the thing a lot of people say that you, you said queen you mentioned queen what's that um, like comparison mate Mate, I'm telling you, your voice is phenomenal, listen, man. I'll be the first to say, no one can fill the shoes of Freddie. Like, there's no one that could do it. So um, humbled by any kind of, uh, um, I don't know, just kind words from anyone. Uh, yeah, making that association. But I'm on my own path because no one can tread that path. That well, Brian that May, Brian May gave you some big words as May, well. You've yeah, worked yeah, with him yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 man. And uh, it, that's just, I mean, talk about, like, your heart bursting. Like, when, when they kind of give you the nod, like... I was working with Brian and Roger um, a couple of times last year and this year, and they just said some incredibly kind things about, like, obviously it's clear that my influences lie um, within the music that they created and also music that their peers have created around the same, t same time period. And to get the nod from those legends is like, it's, um, yeah, it's just, it, it, it means so much. Yeah, it means so it. much. So you also play guitar. Um, I do. Yeah. So is it a lead or bass? What's your favourite? Would you say? Uh, I'm a rhythm guitarist, really, but I do. I, I like to, uh, given the opportunity in this sort of pop world that I find myself in now, I will never shy away. If there's an opportunity to do a guitar solo, I'm there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But I'm a scruffy guitarist, <laughs> but I quite like that. You know, like uh, the way that I play, my sort of um, my feel on the guitar is very like. I call it bedroom guitaring, yeah. like, it, but it's scruffy. But I like that about it. Um, it's a lot of feeling. I try to put the same kind of feeling that I do in singing with guitar. So I can't like, I'm not super quick on the notes, but I try and play every single one of them, even the wrong ones. Yeah, with feeling. No, nah, man, you gotta go for it, man. You gotta go for it. I mean, like, I've I've, I've met Prince and I've, yeah. I've partied with him Talk and I've had a good feeling. time. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, yeah. Well, this is it. You you gotta have that guitar face, yeah, right? BB you know King, I mean? yeah. every note a pound a piece, like, is, <laughs> and um. 
Yeah, man. And then I've got to say, we're talking about guitars. Mm. That, um, Adrian Smith from Iron Maiden, big up, is my favourite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is it. So here we are now at the Invictus Games. Yeah. Um, you're, you're, you're got a phenomenal lineup. Obviously, Rita, you, you're here as well for the closing ceremony. And the British team have come out to your your song, man. Yes, yeah. How been, um, that? I mean, that's that's an honour, you know, like to to, to not just be here singing, but um, having a song that I wrote on my couch about, like we're saying, this belief and this uh, this spirit of never giving up and always following that passion, that spark, that dream, that joy. Uh, having the the UK here. Um, using that song in the manner that it was intended. Not often do you have a song that you've written used in the manner it was intended, right? They often get sort of taken in, in avenues that you didn't expect or sometimes, um, you know, like think it'll go. But this is this is exactly the, the, the passion and the spirit to which that song Mountain was kind of like inspired by. So, um, supremely honored to that, man. But also Space Man as well, Eurovision yeah. song. Contest. Wow, mate. Second place, bruv. Big up, man. <laughs> Big <laughs> Thanks, up, bruv. No, because uh, for a UK artist to be in that position, that yeah. hasn't happened for many, many years. Man. Yeah, uh, 25 years. And um, not to blow my own trumpet here, but we got the most points in history of the, the UK, I think, have ever got in Eurovision. Serious? Yeah, and we were number one in the jury vote. I am blowing my trumpet. I'm going to stop. <laughs> do but, it. Do but it. But like, I, I'm, I only do it because I'm, I'm supremely, like, this isn't, in fact, I'm blowing the team, the team's trumpet. And that sounds wrong, yeah. but but it's true because it was a it was a joint effort. This little sort of group of conspirators, I always call it, like this handful of people behind the scenes. It wasn't many of us, but we went there with um, this tenacity of, you know, knowing that it, we don't have to come first to turn up with grace and to turn up with optimism and and to stomp around in big optimistic boots and enjoy every second of this thing that we all loved as fans. And then we ended up doing pretty well. And um, that was down to the people, and that was down, I, I like to say, to, to the energy that I was surrounded by, and I had the honor of being surrounded by, like I said, my powers that I'm experiencing this. So room. you said the first time in 25 years? Yeah. So so who's that? so that's what, 96? 96, I would say, that was it. So the, yeah. the people, I'm, I'm trying to remember. You've got me now thinking. No, I don't no, want to get it wrong on TV. No, no, I think it's no. Yes, it's '96. So I think it was uh, Gina G. Yes. Yeah. 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 That was the last uh, most ooh, successful. Uh, just yeah, a little David, bit. Ooh, uh, a little bit more. Ooh, <laughs> uh, just a little bit. You got what I'm <laughs> looking <laughs> for. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked tune, man. I love that song. So that was the, and that was '96. And also '96. Euro '96 and all. Yeah. Big yeah. Time. That's right. Yep. And Spaceman, obviously, yeah. like the same. Name, title yeah. of the song. That was when um, Babylon Zoo came up with uh, their Spaceman song in '96. There's yeah. some magic. There's some magic going You'll on there. See it there. And with that <laughs> big runner-up energy as well, there like we that go. two. Like uh, two's my lucky number. This so is I was it, man. Well, listen. Good luck with everything tonight, Mate, man. Thank you. you've, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for coming here, yeah. bros. And we'll catch up again soon. Mate, I just want to say before I go yeah. to, to the Invictus Games for having me and my powers tonight, um, and like letting us step onto that stage. Massive honor. And, um, what, what it symbolizes to me is process over prizes here. Well, before this interview, when we were chatting about what's been going on here, it's just amazing that the energy, the, the love that goes into this thing, it's, it's
vibrant and very, very hot city of Düsseldorf! Every single one of these competitors from 21 nations across the globe has already begun the race. The race to lead by example. The race to recovery. Their race and no one else's. At the pace of their choice with their teammates beside them. And Invictus is for all. The competitors, the husbands, wives, partners, the parents, the children, friends, relatives, comrades. For all of them to say with pride, we are Invictus. This looks so awesome. Dear competitors, herzlich willkommen in Düsseldorf. Welcome to Düsseldorf. A warm welcome to Germany. We are very proud to host the Invictus Games for the first time here in our country. These games bring together more than 500 athletes from 21 countries. But Invictus is so much more than a sports festival. Invictus is a celebration of your courage, your mental and physical strength, and your readiness to defend the security of us all. These games build a home for respect. Respect for your service, for the sacrifices you made and for your heroic recoveries. Welcome to Germany. Welcome to the home for respect. You were part of a purpose larger than yourself and that feeling felt good. Remember, you are not only watching or participating in sport, but experiencing the magic of the human spirit. Learning firsthand from those who live not bound by their journey, but instead freed by it. So, to our Invictus community, you have my respect. Respect for your qualities as humans, respect for maintaining our values and principles, respect for your abilities and your achievements. Are you ready? Let's do this! Thank you! is a wonderful city in the heart of Europe on the banks of the River Rhine. More than 650,000 people live here. We have uh, people from about 180 nations living in our town. You can meet Japanese people, you can stroll through a Moroccan quarter, you can visit the traditional part of the town, the old part of town. You can go shopping on our famous Königsallee. Uh, you can enjoy the sunset on the banks of the River Rhine. We are a wonderful city. We are dedicated to sports, we have excellent culture, galleries and museums and it's just a wonderful, livable place right in the heart of Germany and Europe. The tower is definitely um, a place to visit in Dusseldorf. We call it the Rheinturm or Rhine Tower. Um, it's got a famous restaurant up there and you have a great overview over the city. It's got really, really good sights and we have the Merkur Spiel Arena, one of our famous sports venues where the, it's the home of our soccer team, Fortuna Düsseldorf. Preparing for the Invictus Games was a joint team effort between the city of Düsseldorf and the German military, the Bundeswehr. Everybody enjoyed this cooperation. It was a new experience for many of the people who work in there um, and everybody's very excited. So everybody of the great Invictus family, welcome to Düsseldorf. The opening day of action at the Invictus Games 2023 featured an exciting program of athletics. The track at Invictus Park bathed in sunshine and the hot conditions didn't deter Jacob Anthony from the USA who reached the final of the men's 100 meters IT7 Masters. Also qualifying was fellow countryman Kevin Colvin who ran out a clear winner.
competitive field in the open category and quickest away in the middle lane was Jack Church from New Zealand. He kept his cool and his concentration to race to victory. Two of the finalists in the IT6 category for visually impaired runners were assisted by guides. Wally Nori from the United Kingdom in the middle showed great skill in securing victory. The win clearly meant a lot to him, an emotional moment for the athlete on such an important stage. The first heat of the women's 100m IT7 Masters saw Jenny Hartley from the UK in impressive form. The result was in doubt she ran clear of her rivals late on. Her performance makes her favourite for the gold medal. The spirit of these games was summed up perfectly in the men's IT5 category. Valentin Popper from Romania was lifted by tremendous support from his coaches, the crowd. It didn't matter that it took him more than 22 minutes to complete the distance of 1,500 metres. For him, all that mattered was that he finished, and with marvellous encouragement on and off the track, he enjoyed a moment that will live with him forever. The powerlifting saw the strongest competitors at the Invictus Games 2023 show off their amazing skills. It was a day to remember for Australia. Francine Dudfield, one of the stars of the show. One of the most famous faces at these games is Yulia Payevska, who has a remarkable story. The Ukrainian paramedic was unable to take part in the games at The Hague last year after she was captured in the conflict with Russia. A moment to treasure for the Ukrainian and all those taking part at these uplifting games. Athletes glad to be sharing the same stage, especially Erin Brigden, another Australian gold medalist. Prince Harry among the spectators at this sporting festival. It wasn't necessarily about winning, just being there and being part of such a special occasion was all that mattered. My name is Stacey Denyer. I'm representing Team UK. The sports I'm doing are powerlifting and indoor rowing. And the reason I am here is because I have multiple sclerosis and osteoarthritis in my knees. For me, coming to the Invictus Games, even being amongst other UK, Team UK competitors, uh, everyone is very inspiring. Everyone has a different story and I'm hoping to share my story and to hear other people's stories from all over the world. And for me, um, I hope to get personal bests on my lifts and on my rowing, and if I get a medal, that's just a bonus. So um, I served for nearly 19 years in the Royal Air Force as, a, as police. Um, I've traveled the world, I did three years in Cyprus, I've done a lot of time in the Middle East, including Iraq, Afghanistan, um, Qatar, Oman, UAE, uh, and then all over Europe and all over the USA. After years of ignoring everything, one day my legs just wouldn't work. I couldn't get out of bed. And it was then that I thought I need to get more help. So um, it took a lot of courage to go and say, you know, I'm, I'm not feeling great. I think, I think I've got multiple sclerosis. I think it's flared up. Um, and yeah, it kind of gradually went down, but I got told the, the fitter that you stay, um, the more chance you have at the MS not getting so bad. So that's why I try to keep fit by rowing and powerlifting.
I think it's really, really good for the support, the emotional support and seeing other people who are like you. Um, in my last couple of years of service, I felt like a bit of an outsider because I wasn't fit. I couldn't deploy overseas. I couldn't do the running. Um, so I felt, I felt less than, I felt than a burden. I felt a, like a burden to people. Um, but being amongst other people here who are also military and ex-military, it just gives you that better cohesion and understanding and empathy. <laughs> I think it's really important to spread the message out to people, whether they have physical disability, uh, uh, if they have a mental health condition, or if they are not disabled in, in one way whatsoever, that you should do everything that you can while you still can. You need to look back on life with no regrets. Um, I wish I had done more when I could still use my legs. I wish I could have uh, run a marathon, but now I can row a marathon instead. But my main thing is I want to achieve everything I can. I want to achieve my full potential while I still can, because one day I might not. Suzanne Brown of the USA made a strong challenge in the women's IF4 discus. That throw would secure third place for the American Stacey Adam from New Zealand was also enjoying her time in Dusseldorf. She clinched second place with this impressive attempt. Victory went to Joanna Labonte, the Canadian a class act in this event. Her throw more than two metres further than her nearest rival. Labonte clearly delighted with the result and determined to celebrate in style. A great day for Canada, occupying two of the top five places. The Invictus Games were the climax of a long journey for many athletes, including Jens Niemeyer. Niemeyer came third in the men's IF4 shot put. It was a big moment for him, his joy shared with an emotional German camp. The final of the men's IT 400 meters provided an exciting finish. Gregory Walker on the inside had Team UK's Richard Potter in his sights and eventually made his move to clinch victory. Gregory Walker. Walker was also a member of the USA's 4x100 metres team. A formidable quartet led off by Keontae Story. Walker ran the third leg and the honour of leading his side to victory went to Jacob Anthony. Ukraine came a close second and third place went to Team Unconquered wearing the black colours. All round, it was a great day for the triumphant American athletic squad. I did my personal best in the 1500, was able to take home a silver. And uh, after that, uh, we went to uh, the 100 meter. And then after the 100 meter, I was able to pull out the gold just by 0.1 seconds. That was a great feeling. I worked hard for that one. Uh, the GB guys, they're quick, they're strong. And I'm glad I was able to come out on top. Uh, right now, I just was able to take home the gold in the 400. And I uh, came out strong, was able to get my personal best. And it uh, feels great to be out here. My name is uh, Steph Wolpert. I am uh, from Belgium. And I'm, I am competing in athletics, 100, 200, 400, 1500, and four times 100. I'm doing the indoor rowing four minutes event. I'm also part of the uh, sitting volleyball team. And I'm doing uh, cycling, time trial, and um, the road race. They never found out what I really have, so I don't have any diagnose. Uh, they, all, they only know that I'm paralyzed right and here. The starting point was of my uh, recovery was Invictus Games, but I also decided that I had enough of neurologists, of doctors, and it didn't matter what I had. Having my family next to me in those uh, dark moments uh, was very, very important. Without my wife, Catherine, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. I would be dead. I would have committed suicide. I really, really know that for a fact. I even thought about it several, several times. It was a bit like it would have been selfish to do it for her, for our kids, for my family. 
and all those years they stood by my side. The, the most important lesson that we uh, should uh, learn from the experience is to never give up. Always continue. There's always hope. There's always a new dream. And your family, your friends can help you accomplish uh, that, that dream. Don't sit alone in your dark place. Talk to people. Let's uh, accept the help of your family and friends. They're there for you and in fact, you are there for them as well. Because by receiving from them, you are giving back to them. And that, that's, that's the most important, I think. If we'd have to describe the Invictus Games in three words, then I would pick tenacity, never give up, and hope. I would like to be part of it for the rest of my life. If, they, if, if, if somebody would propose me to come every two years, I would say yes, I would come every two years. Mirkosh Spiel Arena attracted a big crowd, everyone anticipating the men's powerlifting in categories IP9 and IP10. Each athlete has three attempts of their choice. The attempt is valid if both arms are fully extended and the athlete has the weight under control. The United States of America celebrated a double triumph in class IP9. Christopher Ferrell lifted 163 kilograms and took gold ahead of teammate Daniel Norman who also raised the same weight. However, Norman is slightly heavier in his weight class and therefore received fewer points, costing him victory. Johnny Ball of the United Kingdom took bronze. In class IP10, the heaviest category, things were more clear cut. Stephen Lockwood from Australia came third with 140 kilograms. He was overtaken by Daniel Komu, the Canadian lifting a fantastic 159 kilograms. However, there was no stopping Pavel Lizik from Poland. He destroyed the rest of the field with an incredible 225 kilograms, a weight achieved with his second attempt. event had reached a thrilling climax. Happy faces all round among the powerlifters. And before we leave you, earlier on today the Mirkor Spiel Arena took a moment to pause and reflect as the Invictus Games held a moment of silence to remember the victims of the September 11 attack on the United States of America. Discus in the IF4 Open category produced an exciting battle for the medals. Darius Sigilska from Poland set the pace and achieved a best distance of 37 metres 6. It didn't deter Demarcus Garrett of the USA though. He bettered that throw with his second attempt to move into the silver medal position. The Americans sensed the podium 1 2, and with his second attempt, Javier Cardona threw the discus well clear of his rivals. Gold and silver then for an ecstatic American side. The men's 1500 metres in class IT1 took place in a wonderful atmosphere. The crowd lapping up the excitement, the spirit of the Invictus Games on display. Once the race began to hot up, Belgium's Stefan Wolf Wolput finished ahead of America's Jeffrey Peters and Almeida Arquinados Alberto from Colombia. The IT7 men's heats over 200 metres saw Paolo Moy of the Netherlands finish ahead of Kevin Coleman of the USA. The, the, 
result though was reversed in the 100 meters here in the final neither had a chance against Alan McSween from the United Kingdom easily the fastest in his class here second from the right he sped off early and clinched another gold medal for Team UK in the women's 200 meters IT7 final Alexandra J from Australia probably had the most difficult task in the yellow top she had to try to assert herself against three strong Americans. In the last corner, she was still behind Fahima Boston Alley and put in a great sprint to the line to take the bronze medal. Gold went to Nicole Favuza ahead of Jessica Garcia. Another glorious triumph for the US track and field team, underlining their strength at these games. Hi, my name is Annika Hutzler. I am representing Team US. I am competing in track, field, swimming, and table tennis, and I am a right below knee amputee. The Invictus Games really conceptualizes the fact that we are here to show what we are able to push through and what we're able to accomplish just with the power of our mindset. The fact that there are competitors here from different countries, different branches, different injuries, different stories, but we all come together because we all have one common goal. My story began when I enlisted into boot camp. I was in the Marine Corps and I enlisted into boot camp and I started feeling pain in my foot. And I just was told, hey, that's normal. The Marine Corps loves to say pain is weakness leaving the body. So I just thought this is normal pain. And I kept that mindset all the way to finish boot camp, to finish my combat training. And then eventually the pain got too bad. So I went to medical. And when I went to medical, they told me you have a stress fracture. So my bone was broken a little bit in my foot. They put me in a walking boot. And when the normal recovery time for a stress fracture didn't happen when we got to the end of the eight weeks and my foot wasn't healed. They did an MRI and my doctor came in on February 1st, 2018. And he said, so you never had a stress fracture, but you do have a tumor, but don't freak out. And at that point, I honestly was in shock. I was like, I have a tumor. Like, that's not what I thought I was coming in here to be told. And so I was like, so what's our next step? And we began trying to save the foot. And there was a lot of surgeries done, a lot of procedures done to try to shrink the tumor, to try to remove the tumor, and some things that ended very poorly, which ended in infection, ended in nerve pain, ended in um, scar tissue, nerve damage. And so I looked at my doctor one day and I said, how many more times are we gonna do the surgery to try to remove the tumor before there's so much scar tissue, before there's so much pain, before it's not worth saving anymore? And my doctor told me, I give it five to 10 years. And so at 22 years old, I said, cut it off now. I'm not waiting the next five to 10 years, wasting my life knowing that this is inevitable. On February 2nd, 2019, they amputated my right leg below the knee and was the best day of my life because during this time that they were trying to save my leg, I had so many life-threatening infections. I was in and out of hospitals. I was just going doctor visit to doctor visit. And I think it's very easy for us as individuals to think, why me? Why is this happening to me? Like, it's, it gets very frustrating and very discouraging. I saw so many people be successful with their amputation. I have a very difficult time with how my service ended in the military. Why am I the person that is representing Team US when other people had a, in my opinion, a more realistic military experience? But the reality is there's other people out there like me. I think the Invictus Games represents resiliency, community, and 
being unconquerable. Bronze medal match in wheelchair rugby was a repeat of the 2022 encounter, Australia versus France. The French in blue missed out on a medal last time in The Hague. Revenge their aim this time round and it ended up being one of the most exciting matches at these Invictus Games. It didn't take long for Alexandra to score the first try for France. Number 14. The Australians held a narrow 10-9 lead at the break. Perfect block from the attackers allowed Lenny Redrose to make the score 17-12. France knew their chance had gone. Australia winning a thrilling match by 20 tries to 17. Let's go! Yeah! The French had to settle for fourth place yet again. The final was also a repeat of 12 months earlier. The United States of America trying to defend the title against the United Kingdom. Among the crowd, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, founded the Invictus Games and was keen to see which country would come out on top. The Americans got off to a good start, led by Brent Garlick. He scored three successive tries as the USA raced ahead. The UK needed their best player, Charlie Holford, to deliver. And he did show his class, scoring all four of his team's first half tries. The USA maintained their superiority and continued to pull away. 21-13 the final score. Team UK at least had the satisfaction of picking up a silver medal in front of a big crowd at the Mirkor Spiel Arena. The gold medal was presented to Team USA by the Duke of Sussex. One of the most memorable and magical moments from the Invictus Games 2023. Strength, endurance and determination, qualities vital for the sport of indoor rowing. In the men's IR4 class, the USA's Jason Smith came out on top from a large field. He finished ahead of teammate Scott Caroon and Colombian Jan Carlos Gutierrez Lopez. It was full speed ahead also in the IR3 class for athletes who only row with one arm or use support. Vladimir Tovskis prevailed in a close race. Roberto Como from Italy took silver at the last second with a lead of just one metre from Belgium Thierry Dutry. It wasn't just the winner who was exhausted and happy, everyone was relieved to have completed the session. There was also a strong field in class IR35 for athletes with leg impairments and the visually impaired. Therefore, there were two races. Nathan Hoodie from the United Kingdom won his heat. Stefan Wolf Wolfput from Belgium came third. However, both admirable efforts weren't enough to get among the medals. In the second run, athletes did even better, pushing themselves to the limit. Nikola Zaritsky from Ukraine won gold, rowing more than 1,200 metres and finishing clear of June Lee from the Republic of Korea and Gregory Qualls from the United States of America. The Ukrainian received the deserved congratulations from his teammates. The other medals were also hotly contested among the men in the IR7 class. The Australian Andrew Tebbett defeated Chris Anslow and Morgan Daly from the United Kingdom. The women's competition in the IR6 class was a thriller. In the first run, 12 athletes were almost equal, but after four minutes, it was Erin Brigden of Australia who won in a sprint finish. Her tiredness was soon forgotten. Julia Eirich from Germany produced an incredible performance in the second heat. After four minutes of intense competition, she probably had no idea that she actually won bronze behind Stacey Adam from New Zealand. Do you go for the, full the crowd were enjoying the action. In the men's IR6 class, German Moritz Mienka, here on the right in lane 10, came first in his run, which meant third place overall. The medals were only decided in the third heat of the IR6 class. Ben Gallagher of the United Kingdom managed 1,275 metres in four minutes to win the gold medal.
table tennis is making its debut as a sport at these Invictus Games and has attracted plenty of entrants. To lift the title here in Dusseldorf, doubles pairs need to win seven matches in a row. No easy task. By the time Israel's Jagur Cesari and Menasht Zorik faced Germany's Torsten Kardel and Christian Munster in the semi-finals, both pairs had already played five matches, whose winning streak would continue. At one game each and at five all in the deciding game, the Germans went two points clear. But Cesare and Zorik turned up the aggression and forced their way back into the game, earning a match point at 10-9. And the Germans, this time, were out of answers, ending their title chances. Instead of goal, they'd play for bronze against Denmark and their pairing of Mike Holmberg and Kenneth Hiltolf. A tight first 10 points, then Germany went four points ahead. But this time, it brought up match points. Big roar to mark a bronze medal for Torsten Kardel and Christian Munster. Then it was the gold medal match. One flag, two teams, four unbeaten players. On the left, a Jagur Cesari and Menash Zorik, and on the right, a Boas Arad and Jagil Lagzil. Cesare and Zurich settled much quicker into the final and took a commanding lead. And then the first game. They were all businesslike, in appearances at least. In the second game, the eagerness of Arad and Lagzil to get back into the contest played into their opponent's hand. And it wasn't long before match point came to pass. Yagur Cesare and Menash Zorik winning in straight games to take the title for Israel. A new nation at these Invictus Games, winning in a new sport. I feel great to be among the pioneers, um, the first African country to represent in Germany. I feel happy in the, on the Invictus Games and I feel very, very happy. I'm excited to be the um, team captain of uh, Team Nigeria. It's, it's not easy, but I, I feel honored. I feel honored. I'm very, very happy. It's exciting. It's an experience for us. And we are, you know, we are, we are elated as a nation that we are part of these games, and I'm part of a community, you know. And it's something you can't purchase, you can't buy. And an experience is more than the medals, you know, the love, the the food, meeting different people, different nations, different languages. You know, it's it's an experience. It's an experience. Feedback from the boys, they are excited that they could meet um, people like them and the love for them is massive and they're enjoying every bit of it. For me, it's, a, it's a clarion call to other nations in Africa that this is something that we would want them to be part of. I'm the first team manager in Africa. I pride myself with that title and it's a clarion call that Africa needs to join this community. It's uh, really exciting for us, for all of us. It's the first time for Colombia the first Latin American country participating in the Big Two Saints. We're really proud to be here. We prepare ourselves for that. Uh, they were training uh, many times or preparing for this uh, competition. So, but it's not only about competing. They are willing to share with other countries. So that's the most important part. Share with others, sharing experiences and doing our best. For Colombia to be here for the first time is, is very important because it's a good opportunity that people around the world know what the soldiers in Colombia are doing all the time. 
we have an uh, internal conflict and we have many soldiers who was, who was injured during the, the, the service and that is very important because people know what happened in Colombia right now. It's the first time we come here, it's the first international uh, race we do, all of us. And you meet a lot of people, a lot of injuries, it's very interesting. To be part of the Invictus is unique, it's huge, it's amazing, amazing things going on here. I would recommend to all of the countries to join the Invictus. After two days of frantic wheelchair basketball action, it was time for the medal matches in the Spiel Arena. First team unconquered and team UK competing for the bronze medal. The countries had met in the group stages when team unconquered ran out 14-4 winners. Team UK in the red edged the first period going ahead 11-8 with this basket from Gary Callier. Team Unconquered is largely made up of German and Dutch competitors and a noisy crowd made for a lively atmosphere. The second period began with a brilliant basket from Chris Coiter, one of Team Unconquered's sharpest shooters at this tournament. But Team UK were playing some great basketball of their own, with Royal Electrical Mechanical Engineer veteran Matt Trigg scoring the last basket of the match to seal victory and the bronze medal for Team UK. it was time for the gold medal contest and adding to the excitement of the match between the USA and France was the arrival of VIP guests in Harry and Meghan. The USA have been basketball champions at the last four Invictus games and they set out to stamp their authority on this final going six points up with this basket from Carly James. The Americans were even able to make it look easy Brent Garlic and Kevin Green here linking up smoothly for the basket. France were trailing 16 points to nil when they scored their first points, a moment celebrated by everyone in the stands. The French needed to put on a light show of their own in the second half, and although they started scoring more often, the USA kept netting as well. What a shot this was from Danielle Pothoof. France were nonetheless enjoying the occasion and scored as many points as the USA in the second period. But when the hooter went, the final score read the USA 29, France 15. The USA had defended their title to win a fifth consecutive Invictus Games wheelchair basketball crown. The presentation saw Team UK join France and the USA to receive their medals with Harry and Meghan given the chance to personally congratulate the victors. To the swimming pool where it was finals time. In the 100 meters freestyle ISB category, there was no form guide as no heats had taken place. So Germany's Armin Witschak in lane seven might have been as surprised as anyone to find himself the runaway leader after four lengths. The German taking gold ahead of Scott Caroon of the United States of America. In the women's ISE 100 metres free, there was form, with Erin Brigden of Australia having qualified as the fastest. Brigden went in lane four and proved her pace from early on, sustaining it through to the last stroke. In the men's 50 metres ISB backstroke for competitors with impaired lower limb function, such as leg amputation, Ukraine's Dmitry Polivion and Colombia's Camilo Sanchez were the two quickest in qualifying and went in lanes three and four. 
and it was Sanchez who came through for the goal, one of three gold medals he won in the pool to go with three gold medals from the track. In the men's 50 metres free ISC final, it was the turn of Nazar Vozniuk of Ukraine to dazzle, stopping the clock at just over 30 seconds for two lengths of exemplary freestyle swimming. Prince Harry and Meghan found their places in the stands, while Heather Sealover of the United States of America was adamant she'd find her place on the podium in the 50 metres free. And she did just that, with ease. In the men's 50 metres breaststroke ISD category, Richard Davies of Team UK had the pick of the lanes after qualifying, and he put that to good use, emerging as the clear leader towards the end of the first length to take gold for Team UK. Marius Typhus came second for Romania and Shalom Zanzori took third for Israel. Typhus was later disqualified. Then it was the mixed 4x50 metres relays in which Australia were the favourites. Competition would come from the USA and from Ukraine. Though, for once, Australia were ahead and never looked like dropping the pace. The yellow cap, a beacon which the others had to follow. My name is Volodymyr Hara, I am from Ukraine. Uh, in this game I will try and uh, shot archer, uh, pool, uh, swimming and um, uh, table tennis. My friends, volunteers, uh, tell me about the weekend aid, tell what is this, tell the uh, soldiers and officers who have something damaged can be uh, in the try in the sport when uh, this uh, guy won't. And uh, I yet seen this is cool because uh, I been uh, I was not a professional sportsman, but I can uh, feel him the same like in the Paralympics. When I finished uh, study in the military academy, uh, Russia was annexing Crimea. This is be 2014 year. Uh, uh, my company was uh, star fighting in the Lugansk region and uh, we have many uh, explains, uh, many uh, missions and uh, one of these missions we this is reconnaissance artillery. I've been in the higher building, this is maybe 11 or 12th floor and uh, uh, I was help another troops, this is be a Ukrainian uh, air forces who uh, stay in the Lugansk airport and we was protect this airport and uh, Russian troops come behind uh, this uh, uh, position and I was reconnaissance artillery and the, in the same moment uh, uh, enemy artillery shot be, be explosion behind me so in this time this has happened 5th September in 2014 and uh, I have damaged my right arm and, and because my spinal column was totally destroyed I want the guys who have the same damage or easier or harder, this doesn't matter. Just start being the sports. Try swimming pool, try running, try the bicycle. This is uh, not uh, important. And be independent. Not stay at home all day, not be in the parents. You must do something. And maybe you be good programmer or good teacher, but sport help you uh, make your dreams. Your mind be clear and your body start to be stronger. In Victor Gay for me this is respect, relationship and winner.
cycling at the Invictus Games is taking place over a 12 kilometer street circuit around Dusseldorf. The hot weather from earlier in the week had faded away and conditions were perfect for road racing. The ARB2 category was the first criterium race of the day. This category is for cyclists with impairments to one of two limbs who may also have a balance impairment. With Flanders not being far away from Dusseldorf, it was unsurprising to see five of the 11 cyclists on the start line flying Belgium colours, while the rest of the field included two Americans, two Colombians and a Romanian. The course was playing into the hands of cyclists from the Low Countries, and three Belgians were well positioned in the leading group of five. While the Belgians were controlling the pace on the road, the fans were getting ready to celebrate the winners of the time trials from earlier in the day. Specifically, the IRB3 Open Race, which was won by James Rogers, captain of the United Kingdom team. Back on the road, it was no change, at least not at the front of the race. The next medals were given to winners in the IRB3 Masters category, a race for older riders. Team UK's David Jarvis won this race, with Denmark's Kasper Holm and Kenneth Hiltoff claiming silver and bronze, with Hiltoff receiving a hug from Harry himself. And another person wanted to join the podium, Jarvis's daughter, Sophia. In the meantime, moves had been made on the road with Belgium's Peter Kauberg powering off the front for the race's decisive move. <music> Colombia's Maurizio Pena was in second and Belgium's Thierry Dutry was third. But no one could catch Kauberg, who could afford to soak up the experience. In table tennis singles, the TT2 category final was between Germany's Jorge Hinrichs and the Republic of Korea's Choi Il-sang. The two had met in the group stages with Choi coming out on top. TT2 is a seated category for competitors with impaired trunk or balance functionality. Hinrichs attempted to raise his game to defeat Choi whose country are one of the powerhouses of the global game. But the Korean was simply too good and took victory in straight games. The TT7 category is for competitors with psychological impairments and less severe physical impairments. In the women's singles, it brought Israel's Moore Mizra and Australia's Verity Sanchez together. Sanchez has osteoarthritis in her knees and inflammation in her shoulders after she was injured in the Australian Army. She was full of agile movement, though, around the court and won the first game 11-4. In the second, Mizra came back impressively to take it 11-7 and force a decider. The final game was a similar story. 10-7 to Misra, and it was match point. With overall victory secured soon after. Another table tennis gold for Israel. And with a further chance of glory, because Manash Zorik was in action in the men's singles final, again in the TT7 category. Zorik had already won gold in doubles, beating Christian Munster and his partner along the way. And he had the upper hand on the German again, dominating rallies from well behind the table. Sit back and enjoy this point. A beautiful rally between the pair, won by Zorik. He went on to win for a personal second goal in table tennis at these games.
I'm Jules uh, Grunewald. I'm uh, from the Dutch national team. My injury is a uh, shot wound in my uh, right arm. And uh, I'm uh, playing sitting volleyball and uh, I'm 26 years old. I heard from the Invictus Games uh, first time in the uh, uh, revalidation uh, center when I was uh, recovering from my wounding. And uh, they advised me to uh, go look uh, at a training. And that was for me uh, the first moment when I uh, get uh, in contact with, uh, with the Invictus Games. I think the concept of the Invictus Games are really good. Uh, you come together with uh, a lot of people who are in, uh, uh, with different wounded but uh, with all the same goal, and that is recovery. When you spoke to someone, uh, everyone is saying, uh, we, we do this together. I had a shot wound in uh, Afghanistan, uh, 16 January 2021. And uh, at that time, I had, uh, my hand uh, was still on it, but because of the damage in the arm, uh, we decided a year ago to amputate it. And um, yeah, uh, that, that was really hard and uh, yeah, then you, uh, you have PTSD and uh, yeah, with that you have to learn uh, living and uh, no, that's, that's hard to hear and uh, all your comrades uh, in the army uh, going farther, they get a new rank or they go to uh, uh, missions and for your own feeling you stay, uh, uh, yeah, you're still standing still, you're not going forward but that's not not happening because you make really big steps but at some moments you don't see that anymore um, at that moment uh, it's like everything is standing still uh, uh, and you're thinking uh, will I survive uh, how I will come out of this and uh, yeah you are like in, in a roller coaster you're laying down there on a bed in a field hospital and uh, yeah, the only thing where you think is, uh, what happened to me? Uh, how is it possible? And uh, yeah, it, it was really difficult to, uh, yeah, to get out of it. And then the first time you go back in the Netherlands, uh, you saw your friends uh, of your family. And yeah, I think that was the hardest part when you see them uh, suffer about, because of you. Uh, I have uh, tattooed the, the map of Afghanistan on it like uh, you can see it here uh, this is the compass so uh, yeah it's like for me it's showing me the way in difficult times and uh, I uh, have to put this text on it it means uh, uh, wounded but not defeated and that is why yeah, Invictus uh, means the same and, uh, I hope uh, after the games that I have uh, inspired one or two people that's that's for me winning Now to the gold medal match and Invictus Games debutants Colombia meeting defending champions Poland. This was another classic. If the Colombians had any trepidation facing the Poles, they didn't show it. At 13 all in the first set, a narrow lead for the Colombians. But Poland would go on to do what they so often do, pull away when the pressure counts. A close first set won by the defending champions. The Duke of Sussex was in the crowd celebrating his birthday by watching a terrific sitting volleyball match. Into set two, and the Colombian fight back was on. First point of the yes. A little scoreboard pressure on the poles, translated into two set points. As Darius Sigielka went wide, the South American celebrated. The start of set three and an early advantage to the poles in this best of 15 contest. The defending champions were pressurizing the debutants and opened up a 12-5 lead. But a stunning response from the Colombians took it to 14 all. Who would get the crucial match point opportunity? At the net, the decision would go the way of Poland, 
15-14 and gold medal point. A dramatic last point, and it was won by the defending champions Poland, who were overjoyed. But nonetheless, a fantastic Invictus game sitting volleyball debut from the Colombians winning silver. Poland the champions. Archery closes off the Invictus Games 2023. And starting with the women's novice recurve gold medal match, here is Yulia Shevchek of Ukraine who led Francis Marie Cecile Buff 4 0 after two very close first rounds. Under the pressure, Buff upped her game and pulled off a perfect 10. It was then over to Shevchuk to respond with what was to be the final arrow as she delivered the score needed to seal the gold medal. Marie Cecile Buff leaving on the high of that final shot, taking the silver and Yulia Shevchuk victorious for Ukraine. And next on the range was Poland's Tomasz Zieski, who faced Bob Terep of Denmark. Consistent archery from both and two close first rounds completed saw Zieski leading 4-0 However, Tarap was lying equal in the third round with a final arrow, hoping to take it to another round. With a seven to beat, Jujewski kept his focus to finish with a nine and do enough to wrap it up. Gold for Poland and Bob Tarap taking the silver. Celebrations all round for Tomasz Jujewski and his team. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. And yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. In Dusseldorf, at the finish line, at full time, when the whistle blows and the action stops, the Invictus Games are the start and not the end of the journey. Welcome to the closing ceremony for the 2023 Invictus Games in Dusseldorf. This is a celebration of the week-long sporting extravaganza uniting servicemen and servicewomen from around the world. Tonight, we bring together a combination of sport, the military, royalty, and show business in front of a crowd of almost 15,000 spectators. We'll see the man who made it all possible, Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex, as well as performances from recording superstars Sam Ryder and Rita Ora, and a look towards the next Invictus Games in Vancouver Whistler in 2025. The Merkur Spiel Arena, the ideal venue. The roof has been closed on this football stadium, normally home to Fortuna Dusseldorf, 
And the way the arena has been laid out to accommodate the various sports has been cleverly done. All the action has been in close proximity around Invictus Park, the centerpiece Invictus Village, an area of activity attracting both young and old. The volunteers and members of the German Armed Forces have been such an integral part in hosting these games, always ready to join in the fun and the spirit of the occasion. And that community spirit, a central theme of Invictus 2023. And when it comes to the conditions here, you just could not have asked for better. Yes, indeed. The sun has shone virtually all week. The midweek thunderstorms cooled temperatures slightly, but the rain interlude didn't disrupt the sporting schedule. It was the perfect destination for school trips. Thousands of children glad of a day out of the classroom, all of them adding to the party atmosphere here on the banks of the River Rhine in the fascinating city of Dusseldorf. This huge venue has been so well configured for the different sports competitions. We've had table tennis, sitting volleyball, wheelchair basketball, and wheelchair rugby in here, while outside there was athletics, archery, and cycling within quite easy walking distance of this arena and all accessible from the city by car, bus, or tram. And as an added plus, admission to all events this week has been free including tonight's ceremony. We've seen so many inspiring, uplifting examples of courage and bravery. Our hats come off to the competitors who represent 21 nations here. Each has come here on their own personal mission, each with something to prove, many to themselves alone. And while they have conducted themselves with honor and valor on the fields of play, off it, they have been busy making new friends and sharing their experiences. And throughout accompanying them has been the spirit of inclusivity and achievement, the spirit of Invictus, the unconquered, that is at the heart of these games. And it's not just about the competitors, of course. This event is also for family and friends who've supported them. Many say that just reaching this point in their recovery where they can compete at an Invictus Games has been effectively their gold medal. In other words, just being here is a major triumph. These servicemen and women are either active or retired. And one very familiar face we've been seeing all week here is expected to take center stage early on tonight. We are, of course, talking about Buddy the Dog. Who else? The mascot of these games who has been photographed everywhere here. And let's remember, these games wouldn't have happened without an army of volunteers. They've captured the spirit with their dedication, smiles and selflessness. In many ways, the volunteers have been the stars of the show in Dusseldorf this week, helping out in so many different ways. So let me hear it one more time. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Listen, we have 18,000 people in the house tonight, and all of us are to be reunited with the competitors. And uh, they are celebrating or preparing for their grand entrance in the back. And who was here last Saturday? Okay, good. Some people. So you guys do remember what kind of legendary night we had that night, right? Okay, are you ready to take it a bit further tonight? Great, I take that as a yes and I feel like you're ready, listen. But we have also done our part. We had an amazing performance by Macklemore last night, but we decided, listen, it's the closing, it's a big party, we're gonna amp it up by giving you two 
amazing performances. And I want to hear where are all these Sam Ryder fans? And where are all the Rita Ora fans? Nice. But listen, it's also going to get very emotional. It's going to get very official. So kids, please straighten up, grab your snacks. We're going to be here. Guess who's also back? Prince Harry, the Duke of Sussex is back. And he brought along the wonderful Duchess of Sussex. She is, yes, yes. She's stoked to see you all and I've got a feeling the feeling is mutual. Are you just as excited to see her? Yes, you are, perfect. So. We will be sharing this beautiful stage later also with the highest ranking man in the country. And I feel like I can see him already. Yes, I can. He is here, Germany's federal president, Frank Walter Steinmeier is in the house. That's what I call an epic, epic lineup. Grab your seats, we are going live at eight o'clock sharp. You can see the countdown here and you know what to do. Once we hit 10, we all count down together. Are you ready? 10, ten, ten nine, nine, eight, eight seven, seven, five, four, six, five, four, three, two, one. Let's go! Welcome everybody to the closing ceremony of the Invictus Games 2023. Live from the Magna Spiel Arena in Düsseldorf, Germany. Let's welcome all of the participating nations of the Invictus Games Düsseldorf 2023. And we start with those boys and girls from down under. Please welcome Australia. Is this parade of nations a chance to honor those who've entertained and thrilled over the last eight days? The Invictus Games welcomed three new countries this year Israel, Nigeria, and Colombia. All three covered themselves in glory and are now firmly established as part of the Invictus Games family. Australia with a 31 strong team, numerous standout performances, including multiple gold medalist Erin Brickton. She won a staggering seven gold medals, four in the pool, two in indoor rowing, and another gold in powerlifting. A quite phenomenal all round performance from this versatile competitor. The Australians enjoying their moment on the stage. And Erin, well, she might well appear at the Paralympic Games in Paris in 2024. A mother of two from Brisbane, she was medically discharged from the army this year after 10 years of service. And she had watched the last two Invictus Games and was so inspired by the camaraderie to get involved herself. She has repetitive strain injury, but has overcome the odds to make herself a true sporting champion. There were more than 500 competitors total here in Dusseldorf, most of whom are taking part in the Invictus Games for the first time. Some will have already returned home, but most have stayed to see the conclusion of this wonderful event and take part in this wonderful celebration. Up, up the ramp, thank you very much to Australia. Welcome the fabulously Flemish, Belgium! Belgium first took part in the Invictus Games in 2019 as the 19th nation to join the movement. One of their leaders throughout these games has been Stefan Wolf Wolper, a 30-year veteran of the Belgian Air Force who has excelled in athletics. Here he won five medals on the track across distances ranging from the 100 to 1500 meters, then added a sixth medal in cycling. Stefan is paralyzed below the knee, but credits watching the Invictus Games. He saw the inaugural edition on TV in 2014 as a source of inspiration. Though he has won medals here, that's not what this is all about, he says. It's about showing your best. 
2014, the small Estonian delegation showed big personality in its competitions all week long here, and its passionate supporters were always on hand to wave the distinctive Estonian flag. One ebullient contender 
has been in swimming and in sitting volleyball. It's Marcus Hope, whose overt enthusiasm for everything he has taken on here has proven infectious. Colombians, the Estonians rather, also celebrating the silver medal of Rego Roots. He earned that in discus. And coming up very shortly, it will be to the letter F. Introduction from the uh, announcer. Romance, as I say, was in the air because on the basketball court, the French competitor Didier proposed to his longtime girlfriend after one game. And thankfully, she said yes to his proposal. Didier won a silver in powerlifting. What a week it's been for him. What a week indeed. And they came home with a bronze medal and they were fantastic from start to finish. Please welcome Georgia! The champions in sitting volleyball at the 2018 Invictus Games and runners-up in The Hague last year. Georgia came to Dusseldorf determined to retain their place on the podium in their marquee sport. And they did. Mission accomplished. Georgia takes home bronze, prevailing in a three-set thriller against Team UK. I think the Colombians have won the prize so far, haven't they, for the most boisterous arrival onto the stage. The French and the Danish, however, have given them a run for their money. I think at the moment the Colombians are in the gold medal position and the Danes are in the silver medal position. I would agree. Let's hear it for Georgia! One of our debut teams, Israel! A terrific reception for Israel. Another nation which received great support on their game's debut. They certainly left their mark as well, especially on the table tennis table. Table tennis was added to the schedule from the last games. And Israel was certainly glad it was. One of the mixed doubles finals was an all-Israeli affair. And they take over a bag full of medals of all colours, despite the fact it's a fairly small contingent here from Israel. And you can see from your screen, it's quite a logistical challenge, really, because the competitors are filtering along the front of the stage, quite a long stage, and then they have to move round and take their seats in the auditorium, ready for the rest of the ceremony, which, of course, will reach its climax with the, the concert, the star billing, of, Sam Ryder, we've got Prince Harry, the birthday boy, 39 yesterday. And then, of course, Rita Ora topping the bill, I suppose, in some ways. I've come here to say, Ciao, Italy! to the stars through difficulty. That was the motto of the 17 Italian team members who competed here. To the stars through the swimming events went Matteo Pierapan, whose talents were evident as he captured two golds and two silvers, demonstrating his mastery over a range of strokes in the pool. tell you what, this has been so well choreographed because the party atmosphere started from the beginning, really, didn't it? There was no need to whip 
the, uh, the crowd up, the competitors into a frenzy because everybody was in the mood. It's been a celebration all week long, but now with the competitions finished, you really see the joy that is coming out. It's infused this arena. Please welcome Jordan! Yeah, here comes Jordan next into the arena. And what a story here. Big concern, Rola Amro in athletics. She became a worldwide star in some ways. She'd never raced before. She even borrowed a wheelchair to allow her to compete. And her nerves before she got to the start line were noticed by one of her 100 meter rivals, Claire Gibson from the United Kingdom. This is a remarkable story. Claire actually slowed down so the two of them could cross the finish line together. Claire was not concerned in the slightest about winning the event. She was more concerned about supporting a fellow competitor. The true spirit of the Invictus Games was summed up in that very sweet moment. An abiding memory for me of these games and for so many as well. Now this next nation, they've been licked. They've been licked. They are the Netherlands! The Invictus Games hosts from a year ago, the Netherlands delegation had a rather short commute here to Dusseldorf as we are just less than two hours drive from the Dutch border. A team that has color to any sporting occasion. The orange men and orange women were especially good in cycling at these Invictus Games. And as a nation that excels in winter sports, it will be very interesting to see what the Dutch do in Whistler, Vancouver in two years' time. Unsurprisingly, plenty of support for the Dutch in the crowd. I think the two support animals on the stage are a little bemused by what's going on. You have to applaud their coordinated dance moves, too. Spirit, they also came with a pretty mean hacker, Aotearoa, New Zealand! And speaking of the haka, what a game it has been for Paulette Doctor, who carried the New Zealand flag in the opening ceremony. She earned bronze for her nation in table tennis, and the New Zealand delegation celebrated her success with a specially created haka, the Na Ma Tatoa means unconquered. It was a sight to behold, and it brought tears to Doctor's eyes and to the eyes of the spectators who watched it. They came with traditional Maori boys! Thank you very much! Aotearoa, New Zealand! Halfway through the parade of nations. Are you ready for some of the best dancing you're going to see tonight? The Super Eagles are in town. Welcome, Nigeria! Yes, the Super Eagles. Nigeria taking part in their first Invictus Games. They entertained everyone with their enthusiasm and can do spirit. We won't forget the delight and dancing celebration by the Nigerian team when they won their opening match on sitting volleyball. Unbridled joy, 
A special mention should also go to peacemaker Azek Bula, who won the nation's first gold medal of the Games in powerlifting. They also won a medal in table tennis. And I think they're going to uh, just stay out there a little bit longer than perhaps the organisers might hope. Well, let's just uh, sit back and watch this. These guys are having it right now. OK, from just over the border, please welcome Poland! Yeah, the strength of the Polish team was on display everywhere. You looked in Dusseldorf in powerlifting where Pavel Lizek won the men's IP10 category after lifting an astonishing 225 kilos. That's 66 kilos more than any other competitor in the field. And also they shone in indoor rowing where Łukasz Kozieli proved formidable. And what can we say about Poland's sitting volleyball team? Last year's champions were favourites coming into these games and they lived up to their star billing with a second consecutive goal here. Next up, one of my favorite countries in the world. Welcome, my friends, from Romania! Romania saved some of their very best for last at this Games. They took two gold medals in archery this afternoon, finishing with a flourish elsewhere. Valentin Popa delivered one of the moments of the Games in the men's IT5 1500 meter race. He was in what looked like a regular wheelchair and he was clearly in pain. It took him 22 minutes to cross the finish line, but when he did, everyone was cheering him on just as they had been every inch of the way. It was truly spectacular to watch and it underscores the heart and passion of this team. Republic of Korea excelled at table tennis, winning multiple medals in the seated categories where Choi Il Sang and Young Hoon Chang dominated the mixed doubles. Lee Ju Yoon was a standout performer in indoor rowing as well. His talent earning silver in both the sprint and endurance events. The Republic of Korea representing Asia at these games and it's very much uh, part of the Invictus Games family.
elsewhere. There was Alexander Budko, who was phenomenal in powerlifting and wheelchair basketball. Budko was a barista in Keith, who was conscripted, and he lost both of his legs below the knee when he was hit by a shell on Ukrainian Independence Day last August. He has since toured the United States with the United Ukrainian Ballet Company, dancing in a show about together. the consequences of we war. Start together. A story that has Ukraine. been carried on here at the Games. The Ukrainians just lingering a little longer on stage, and who can blame them, really? A lot of support for Ukraine oh, after yes. the traumas of the last two From years. From the place that made me the person I am today, please welcome my family and friends, the United Kingdom! A good reception for the United Kingdom, who've had a large contingent here in Dusseldorf. Friends and family also here in force to provide encouragement. And one story that melted hearts involved Danny Stevens from the Royal Navy. She competed in the swimming, not to win, but to merely conquer a fear of water. She suffered a mishap in the water during a team building exercise while in service, and it left her with epilepsy. She came here solely to prove she could get back into a swimming pool with her son, Henry, and it was mission accomplished for Danny, who swam her race and then was joined in the pool by Henry. Another magical moment involved Kenetha Franklin, known as Frankie. She wasn't able to compete in her indoor rowing event as she was doing another sport at the time. So a special event for her alone was arranged except she wasn't on her own, far from it. 18 People of her teammates the walked the out of the rowing machines with her, sat alongside her, and pulled away for four minutes on rowing machines. All the time they chanted her name, spurred her on, teamwork at its very finest. And we love. Well done, United Kingdom. Well done. The emotion is palpable on the faces of the Team UK competitors. Team still filing in. Quite a big team. And the emotions apparent. The sacrifices these people have made throughout their lives. But showcase superbly, really, on a sporting stage through the Invictus Games. Sure. I'm not sure if there's anybody left in the United Kingdom. They're all here. Some of them have applied to compete at the Invictus Games two or even three times before being selected. I'm just and they've spoken to so eloquently about the reaction when they got the phone days. call the that let them know they would be here. competing here. Are we ready for one more? They brought their Star Spangled Banners and they came all the way from the United States of America! Here is the United States of America, and among them, the extraordinary Heather Sea Lover, an Air Force major who is leaving these Invictus Games laden with gold, silver, and bronze. And those medals came from every corner of the Invictus Park, from the track, from the pool, and from the indoor rowing space. She is in the double digits medal-wise. Most of them are gold, and that makes her the most successful competitor at these games. States also scored golds in powerlifting thanks to Christopher Farrell and in wheelchair basketball, where they captured their fifth consecutive title. They were victorious as well in a wheelchair rugby, where the gold medals were memorably presented by Prince Harry, much to the delight of the team and of spectators. And for all that, one of the loveliest moments came in yesterday's road cycling criterium final, where Christian Vega made sure that they finished 1-2. Kawada was leading, but he wanted to see his friend and teammate take the goal, feeling that he deserved it after all that Vega has overcome. It was a moment that transcended sport, and it really showed what these games are about.
there, the USA team. And as per tradition, it will be the host nation to be introduced finally onto the stage as the Parade of Nations prepares to reach its climax. Prince Harry enjoyed himself with Meghan. The birthday boy, 39 yesterday. tonight at this venue a chance really for, for the fans the spectators almost 15,000 of them just to salute the heroes of the last so week or me. so I failed pretty much everything at school so this is going to take an awful big effort bitte willkommen Deutschland <laughs> Unsurprisingly, the biggest roar of the night for the host nation. What fantastic hosts they've been. And what a show they've put on this week. 37 members of the German team, their federal defence, known as the Bundeswehr. And a sports therapy centre in Warrendorf, 100 kilometres from Dusseldorf, is where most of these competitors have been staying as part of a rehabilitation programme. The goal there is to facilitate a return to service for the German competitors here. Participation in the Invictus Games is a huge step on their individual path to rehabilitation. The active and former soldiers of the German team have suffered mental or physical injuries during deployment or in accidents of all the services, of course. All of them suffer from almost all of them suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder and the team captain of the German team is Jörg Hinrichs some of the notable performances from Jens Neimeyer who uh, was Germany's first medalist of these games a bronze in the shot put for him Julia Eierich from two gold medals in cycling and a bronze in indoor rowing as well so uh, the Germans Getting the acclaim of the crowd, the home crowd, a sporting crowd, partisan at the moment, understandably so, and quite rightly applauding their German compatriots, but they've given every nation really the respect, the dignity, the honour that all the competitors deserve. And Germany have really put on a wonderful exhibition this week in every respect. So the competitors have been across the stage, but we're not quite finished really because there's more to come. Not from competitors, but shall we say from the, the army of backup people who contributed. Stage. They carry on. We talked about this a little bit earlier on. 
Brother, not only do we want to say thank you to these wonderful human beings, but everybody behind the scenes made this happen. Please welcome the friends and family. To one of the biggest roars of the night, an indispensable part of every team, the friends and family of competitors from all over the globe. They are being recognized for the hugely important roles they play in the lives of the competitors. Friends and family have at times assumed a carer role for competitors. They have gone above and beyond in aiding the wounded in their recovery. Yeah, these boys and girls, and there are youngsters out there, as well as mums and dads and grandparents as well. They've made huge sacrifices on a daily basis to support those who've appeared on the no fields what, of play. No matter what our competitors went through, each and every one of these How lovely it is to see them listen. get they their right moment there on stage. Needed. Thank you, family. Thank you, friends. motivators, at times the caregivers, quite often Once the again, reason a huge why. Thank you to the family and friends of the Invictus Games. Yeah, almost brings a tear to the eye, really, to and see them. One last time. Just uh, having their moment in the spotlight, deservedly so as well. We did nothing of this without every single one of them. 1,500 volunteers right across the Invictus Games, Dusseldorf 2023. So let's Yes, the volunteers, as we just heard there, more than 1,500 volunteers from 33 countries, incredibly, have all helped with the smooth running of these games. Helps out in so many different ways, making sure competitors have everything they need to perform, directing spectators to their seats. You name it, they do it, and they always do it so willingly as well. In their distinctive yellow and black tops, which have been a real feature of these games everywhere you walk around the park. They've been there helping out with a smile on the face. And as ever tonight, happy smiling faces. Volunteers, every single one of you, thank you. Here's our host, Hadnet Tesfaye. If you could only see your smiles, if you could only see your beautiful faces, I can feel it all the way to up here. Everyone in this room is buzzing with excitement. We've got 21 teams from 21 nations, as well as a bonus group of family and friends. We've got a squad of volunteers because they all are as much a part of the Invictus family as the Rhine is part of Düsseldorf. So give them a round of applause and to yourselves as well. Oh my God, what a crowd. Look at the dogs go like, this is a lot of people. Listen, so now that we've gathered again in our home for respect, this would be the great or the perfect moment to thank Boeing. 
the presenter of the Invictus Games. So please give a warm round of applause to the President, Chief Executive Officer of Boeing Defense Space and Security, Mr. Theodore Ted Colbert III. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. After seven days of extraordinary competition, I am honored to join you for the closing ceremony of the Invictus Games Dusseldorf 2023. Tonight, we celebrate you. You have inspired us with your strength and resilience, and you have shown the world what it means to have the heart of Invictus. One competitor who has inspired me tremendously is Mike Muchka from Team Germany. All right. In 2010, Mike and his fellow Buddhist Bear soldiers were in a relentless firefight in Afghanistan, trapped in an ambush for hours. Tragically, three comrades lost their lives, and Mike sustained severe injuries. But he refused to surrender to despair. Thirteen years later, Mike is not only here with us at the Invictus Games, but he won a silver medal in Shaput. All right, Mike. All right. His recovery <clears throat> against all odds is a testament to his unconquerable soul. His journey is what the games are all about. Mike and all of you remind us that the human spirit can triumph over adversity. Boeing's deep commitment to service members and defense forces is no secret. We stand by service members from the beginning of their military journey to life post-military. And we invest heavily in hands-on recovery programs that help veterans and their families heal from wounds both seen and unseen. Recovery is a journey without a destination. It's a lifelong journey of growth and self-discovery and healing. And these games are one stop along the way. As you look back at your time here, remember the moments of celebration, the moments of struggle, and the moments, most importantly, of connection, those lifelong relationships forged among teammates and competitors will last forever. As you move on from this year's games, lean on your people and support one another because there isn't an obstacle you can't overcome together. I want to extend my sincere gratitude to all of the Invictus Games supporters and volunteers, and of course, the organizers and its patron, Prince Harry. Thank you. Thank you to the Invictus Games Foundation, the German Federal Armed Forces, and the City of Dusseldorf for an incredible week of competition and camaraderie. Boeing is proud to join you in serving those who have so selflessly served each one of us, and we are humbled to be part of the Invictus family. Thank you, congratulations to all the competitors, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you. performance of the night and I just want to know are you ready for it okay stop 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 
right there. I'm gonna ask again and then you're gonna give me more energy, okay? So this is up, are you ready? what I wanted to hear. Listen, I'm going to come to you now because I want to hang out with you guys real quick because we have a little bit of time and I'm really hoping that I don't fall in these shoes, but I'm going to be fine. Pray for me. Listen. Okay. Hello, hello, hola, oh, muy bien, y tú, yes? Super bien. Oh, super bien, even. Do I say buenas tardes or do I say buenas noches at this point of time? Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Welcome, please. That's so good. Let me see who else is here. Team Canada. Yet. Not yet. You have one more year to wait, not yet. It's not your turn yet. I'm gonna come back to you later. Oh, guck mal, hier zu Hause. I'm Marcella. Good now. Wie geht's? Gut. Schönen Abend, ne? Yeah. Should I translate that? I said, how are you doing? Isn't it a beautiful night? And you said, yes, it's a beautiful night. Perfect, let me, let me, let me go. Hello, schönen guten Abend. Hello. Look. It's okay. The Frenchies are in the house as well. France is here. Give it up. <laughs> Look, I was looking for you guys. Team Niger. Team Niger. Listen. Hello, Team Nigeria here for the first time. Hey. So let me see. Are you done? Are you sure? Can I go on? All right. Thank you very much. I think I have a feeling that the energy tonight is just mwah, premium. Yes, mwah, premium. So I think that you all are ready to enjoy this show. Ladies and gentlemen, for you, live on stage, Sam Ryder. Let's go! Put a light on me! Hey. 
This one's for everyone, it's called Mountain. Hey. Rough seas might pull me under it. Dark clouds might dim my days. There's always bright tomorrow's way. I close my eyes and say, Remember how you've made it through the fire. Remember how you've come so far. An unstoppable force of nature. Yeah, that's what you are. I know all that I have lost. Has given me the purpose of conquering my pain through love. I sing this hymn to rise above. I am a mountain, and down in the valley below is all that I've overcome. All that I've overcome. Whoa. I am a mountain, and down in the valley below is all that I've overcome. All that I've overcome. To be one. Okay. Whatever life may throw, I pass the test. Whatever fate might dream of for me next, I stand with my head to the sky, but shaken by thunder and winds and the tide. I know all that I have lost has given me the purpose. Conquering my pain through love, I sing this hymn to rise above. I am a mountain, and down in the valley below is all that I
want to be one. <laughs> Sam Ryder, who's hit mountain, carries extra significance for the members of Big Team up. UK. He right chose tonight. it as the song oh. they marched out to during Give it the up opening for Sam ceremony. Ryder. The shiniest man of the night. You are. Do you know that I put on this dress only to out glitter you? And then well, I realized. That's a challenge because I was going to wear that. It's impossible to out glitter you, sir. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? You did an amazing job. Thank you so Basically, much. No, oh my gosh. No. Oh, no, no. No, no, make some noise to Sam Ryder, please. Please. You're a legend. Absolute Sam. Legend. I want to talk about uh, your song Mountain with you because yes. I'm pretty sure that you saw how the UK, the UK team reacted yeah. to that one. It's very dear to their heart. It is very dear to their heart. But I want to ask you, how has your personal journey with this song been? What's it been like? Uh, it, it can't compare. To, I'm, I'm just so in awe. I'm blown away. I'm bowled over constantly that what this what Invictus represents, and like I said, it's process over prizes and courage over credit. I mean that with uh, every ounce of my heart. I like to see these people just absolutely smashing life and um, amazing people behind it and, and celebrating what is, uh, what should and must, it's crucial to be celebrated for being a human being and, and protecting that tenacious and unstoppable spirit. So bless you all. Thank you so much for letting me just sing my head off for a bit and yeah, come along. Thank you. It means he the world. He is a national treasure. Sam Ryder, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a lovely night. You're doing you amazing too. job. Thank you. Bye. Sam Ryder, everyone. What a wonderful human being. I want to welcome you once again to the closing party of the Invictus Games 2023. And these games were not only fun, but they brought us closer to a home for respect. 140,000 people came by to watch the competitions all week. 140,000 people. And do you know who was crucial in having that go over smoothly? You guessed right, it was the 1,200 volunteers the caregivers, and most especially, the families and friends of our competitors. You did an amazing job. Please give yourselves a round of applause. You did an amazing job. Everybody, all the way up there, all the way back there, all the way back there, you did great. Thank you so much for coming by, for cheering, for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So, how do you create a truly game-changing event? How does that happen? Let me tell you how that happens. When the federal present president takes the mic. Dear audience, please welcome the federal president of Germany, Frank Walter Steinmeier. Hello, Düsseldorf. And above all, good evening to the Invictus community. Welcome to Germany. What an amazing atmosphere. And what an amazing moment that I get to share with you. If there is somebody of the ever-dwindling number of people who don't know about the Invictus Games, you will perhaps find it hard to imagine the atmosphere that immediately unfolds you as you enter this arena. You don't merely walk into a sporting event. 
with exciting competitions, international teams, and numerous heart-stopping finals. What you notice from the very first moment you come in here is something else, an immensely strong sense of community and solidarity. And it's the community of those who have not let themselves be beaten, not by their severe physical injury or emotional scars, not by pain, by grief, or by memories of horrible losses that will not let them go. Your strength to keep on going every single day is what has brought you together here. All of you here refuse to give up, and in that, you are an example to all of us. You are some 500 members of the armed forces and this year the police too, who have come here from more than 20 countries. In the past eight days, you have competed to be the fastest and the best. Take home the medals you won. You have fought hard in the various disciplines, but over the eight days of games, you have been in exchange with each other. You have been celebrating together and you and your families have forged new friendships. And for eight days, you have been together with people who understand precisely where you're coming from when you tell your story. And that is exactly the reason of these games. Each and every one of you has a story to tell, a story that far more people should hear. The Invictus Games put the spotlight on people in uniform, people who not only do their duty, but risking life and limb on a daily basis. Before the closing ceremony tonight, I had the chance to speak to Mike Mutschke, a parachutist, who was seriously injured when rescuing his comrades in Afghanistan. For years, he has campaigned tirelessly for wounded veterans to receive greater recognition. He thinks, and I quote, we can show Germany what can happen to serving soldiers and what the consequences can be. He believes this is spoken about too little, and I think he is completely right in this. Back in 2017, Sandra Winkler was a policewoman on the beat in the town of Fiersen when she was involved in an accident with a drunken lorry driver. She barely survived. Her partner died. What she says is all too true. She says, I don't expect anybody to pay obeisance, but I almost died for my country and sometimes the feeling that people find it easy to forget. We should not forget that, ladies and gentlemen. Both, both, dear guests, Mike and Sandra, serve their country and continue to serve it, as do all of you here. And both of them pay a high personal price every single day of their lives for having defended our freedom and the values at the heart of our liberal democracy. 
what it means, what it means to be a steadfast in an emergency is something that many people have to understood since crisis unfortunately struck Europe 570 days ago. Because Russia invaded Ukraine on the 24th of last year, soldiers are being wounded and are dying on the battlefield in defense of their homeland while we are gathering here. Countless people will return damage from this war and will bear the scars for the rest of their lives. I would like to say this to the team from Ukraine, which has already taken part in the Invictus Games for the second time and must now return to defend its country against the Russian aggression again. I would say you have my profound respect as well as the support of all of us. May you draw new stores of strength from your days here. Ladies and gentlemen, this illegal war could be over today if Vladimir Putin were to withdraw these troops from foreign soil and so put an end to this death and destruction. Together we stand with Ukraine. We support the Ukrainians in their heroic struggle to ensure that Putin's Russia does not win this war. And together with Ukraine, we hope each day that this war will end, that this war will end so that the dying and suffering and the injustice has, are no more. Team Ukraine, all of us here feel for you and hope that you can take something of the special strength of this community of the unbeaten back with you. Thank you for being with us this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, I am grateful. I am very grateful to the Duke of Sussex as someone who himself has been in combat for initiating and launching the Invictus Games nine years ago. Thank you for that. And I am grateful to our armed forces, the German Bundeswehr and the city of Düsseldorf, for bringing the Invictus Games to Germany for the very first time. Thank you for that. And I would like to thank in particular the many, many volunteers whose great dedication had made this Invictus Games possible. Thank you, volunteers. My great respect and gratitude also goes for the friends and family 
of the participants. You have accompanied, you have accompanied your loved ones on the long, hard road to recovery and healing and have demonstrated how crucial it is to stand by one another. Thanks for all your courage, support, engagement, warmth, and solidarity. And finally, I come to the participants. You above all have my heartfelt thanks for not giving up and for being an example to us all. I will endeavor to ensure that respect for your service to your country and your compatriots will take further root and grow in the midst of our society even after these eight days are over. Thank you so much. Thanks to all of you. of Germany, Frank Walter Steinmeier, delivering a quite powerful message. My name is Romeo and I'm here with my dad. I'm very proud of him because when I see how he plays table tennis, it makes me happy. We're actually a military family and so we're here to support all of our wounded warriors. I mean, these are our brothers and sisters. My name is Zayan and I'm from France. Today I support my father. Uh, bringing my family, friends over here felt wonderful. It's like a vacation away from a vacation. Having friends and family here for the competitors is a must. <laughs> you know, having us here supporting them, knowing what they're about as well, is the biggest part. I enjoy the environment, the relaxation, the um, the love from everybody you get. It doesn't matter who you are, what you have, there's a lot of love. I think it's just amazing for us to be able to see how he's been able to um, like change his life after his injury and then come and still play sport and still succeed and win. And yeah, it's an amazing opportunity. It's just, just been really great. I'm here and I want him to know that I'm near and I love him too much. to introduce you to Anna Sofia. Anna Sofia is the daughter of Julia Paeska, better known as Tyra. You may already know both women from the Netflix series about the Invictus Games. Tyra is on Team Ukraine. She is seeing cruel and sad things in this war that we cannot even begin to imagine. She was taken prisoner by Russia in March of 2022. And at the last Invictus Games in Den Haag, her daughter, Anna Zofia, competed in archery. Not instead, but for her mother. And then a miracle happened. Tyra was released after 12 weeks. Anna, thank you so much for being here. How was the moment when you heard the news that you would get your mother back? Yes. Actually, I can hear me. So uh, it was really unexpected uh, because we thought that uh, liberation would take a lot of time. So yeah, and that was a really hot summer day when I woke up and my father told me that my mother, my mother has been 
the list and uh, soon she will be home. So it was kind of a miracle. And you know, there's a certain scenario that we're very familiar with, with fathers being the soldiers. But how does it feel for a daughter when her mom is a soldier? It's a good question. And I think that uh, I can't maybe say how it differs from another situation because I have never been in another conditions. Mm -hmm. But I can truly say that it really teaches you uh, for a lot of situations mm -hmm. and how to maybe lead this life more with uh, dignity and uh, honor. You were 11 years old when the war began and now you're 20 years old. So this is a very, very crucial time, your teenage years, your adolescence. Um, and maybe it's even more crucial when your mom is gone. Did you always understand what she was doing? I've been a really smart kiddo, you know? So uh, from the childhood, my parents taught me as I told you about an honor and the dignity. So I can't say that I had uh, problems with understanding what my mother is doing and why. It was uh, really strong for me, even in my 11 years old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did your relationship change over the years? A lot. It really changed. Uh, all that I can say, they become closer, mm. really. So now that Tyra is back in civilian life, I really am curious because you learned so much from her growing up until now and you keep on learning, but what do you think she can learn from you? I think that I still have things to learn from her. Mm -hmm. So, what I also can say. This is my last question before I leave Anna Sophia. Um, how proud are you of your mom? I'm really proud. You can't see this. Yes, I can. I'm really. I can. You're here. She's amazing. Yo. So thank you so much. Give it up, everybody, for Anna Zofia, who, by the way, competed today in the final of the esports you played super mario kart and you made it to the final i think that's amazing thank you so much anna zofia thank you so so much for being here thank you anna zofia by the way and look oh my god I was just about to introduce you, but now that you're here, he's here, the Duke of Sussex. This is your stage. Thank you, Anna. Ooh, well, you talk, can't take the bench away. I need to sit down. Uh, vielen Dank an alle Düsseldorfer und vielen Dank an Deutschland. <laughs> Für dieses fantastische Spiel. As you have seen and experienced this week, 
is so much more than a sporting event. It is a platform for positive change. The ripple of respect has been felt far and wide, and we hope you too are feeling it deeply. And I'm sure you're all physically exhausted. Who wouldn't be? But I also hope that you are mentally stronger than when you arrived. <clears throat> we may have provided the platform, but you provided the magic. And don't you ever forget that. We've all... We've all witnessed the true impact sport has had on your recovery and on your post-traumatic growth. But you will never truly know the impact that your actions this week have had on millions of people around the world. You have opened people's hearts through your vulnerability, through your resilience, and through your sheer abilities. You have shown us that joy can emerge from struggle, and for that, we are eternally grateful. <clears throat> A week ago, I stood here and told you about the significance of being able to wear your nation's flag again. And so many of you have told me that that hit you right here. For many of you, the uniform you've been wearing this past week will give you a new story to tell. And for others, it may give your old uniform new meaning. But I'm here to remind you that after all this, you don't need to rely on a uniform, nor should you ever feel lost without one. Why? Because everything you need is already within you. Tomorrow, you will each walk away with memories that are different and unique to you. But my hope is that every memory made brings a smile to your face through a sense of belonging and an opportunity for you and your family to look forward with pride and with purpose. Yesterday, Yesterday, I met with Master Corporal James Gendron from the Canadian team in the Invictus 2025 tent. James, where are you? <clears throat> While we were chatting, I noticed bagpipes lying on the floor in the far corner. Some of you may know what bagpipes mean to me, so I couldn't help but hope that they'd be played. Little did I know that 30 minutes later, it would be James picking them up and offering to play. Yet I had no idea what they meant to him. Nor did I know what memories they triggered for him. In Afghanistan, he played 63 ramp ceremonies for 63 caskets, for 63 souls, for 63 families.
for four years after that last ceremony, he couldn't touch them. This week, he wasn't even sure whether he could bring himself to play them, but he did. What had once haunted him, dare I say it, may now be what helps heal him. Thank you, James, for your service, for your courage, and for sharing your gift. So many of you and your loved ones have been to the darkest places imaginable. But your mission to heal and grow has been a shining example to us all. You've shown us the power in not defining people by assumption or their backstory or past pain, but rather instead on their ability, how they show up, and who they are in the present. After this week, know that you are all leading the way for defining human potential and human decency. We value you. We need you, and the world does too. And next year, we've got a lot to look forward to. The Invictus Games Foundation 10-year anniversary, yes, 10 years. And then, and then it's off to Vancouver Whistler 2025. Germany, thank you so much for the reception and the respect that you have given every single competitor and their family and friends. You have raised the bar here. How much higher can we go in Canada? I'll see you there. Thank you. Prince Harry, the founder Home of the respect. Dim for Maho. The house from the respect. O fork, o pono. Une maison pour le respect. Dom Shatsunku. La casa del rispetto. Home for respect. Ate Wittsema Ojax. Ki porte to Kony Ojax. La casa del respect. Home for respect. Medium for respect. Casa for respect. Ein zuhause for respect. Instead of going down to find trouble
Ladies and gentlemen, for the official flag handover ceremony, please welcome now on stage. For the Invictus Games Foundation, Dominic Reed, Chief Executive Officer. For Germany, Jörg Hinrichs, Team Germany Captain. Jens Niemeyer, Team Germany Competitor. Boris Pistorius, Federal Minister of Defense. For Canada, Elena Mundy, Team Canada Co-Captain. Bernard Casey, Team Canada Co-Captain. Wilson Williams, Squamish Nation. Jeanette Pitipa Taylor, Minister of Veterans Affairs and Associate Minister of National Defense. flag a symbolic moment at this closing ceremony Winter is coming, but in Canada, that's a great thing. In February 2025, come experience the beauty of Vancouver and Whistler at the Invictus Games. We can't wait to see you. Bienvenue au Canada. The flag has been received and the Invictus Games will be coming to beautiful British Columbia in 2025. In the words of Prince Harry, the Games in Canada will be held in partnership with the First Nations in the spirit of truth and reconciliation with indigenous, indigenous communities. Thank you, Team Germany. You've been an amazing home for respect. And thank you to Team Canada. We're going to see you all in Vancouver in 2025. <laughs> One year and 10 days ago, and I remember this precisely because it was my birthday, so one year and 10 days ago, I met my very first Invictus competitors in this very arena. And over this period, I've been fortunate to discover more about the Invictus Games. I've met amazing people remarkable people, ambitious, impressive, and they all share a deep conviction and unwavering passion for the cause. 
Everybody in the Invictus family is working very hard towards a better future for those who are injured, wounded, but unconquered. And I think it's essential to shine a spotlight on these individuals and include them in our society as a way of showing gratitude and respect. I love sports. Sports motivate us, they challenge us, they keep us going, and then most importantly, in the Invictus Games, they provide one thing that is incredibly precious, visibility. I am truly impressed by what you, the competitors, and your families, and your friends have achieved and continue to achieve every day. I feel a deep sense of humility towards your accomplishments, not only your athletic achievements, but also your resilience and your determination way before you set foot on a sports field. The willingness to put one's own life in service to society and to protect our democratic values is not only an individual decision. It affects our competitors just as much as it affects their friends and families. And you all are a great inspiration, and for that, I want to say thank you. Thank you. And now, everybody, it's time for one more superstar. She is just as excited to see you as you are excited to see her. I've seen her perform this afternoon, and boy, are you in for a treat. Just up, give it up for the amazing Rita Ora. I've been gone for a minute, been low-key with my business, asking Rhea, who is it, is it true? I've been taking off every weekend, you and I in our feelings, cause the high so much better with you.
We're not finished yet. This song is called Ritual. It's really, honestly, just about finding that thing that works for you and fighting for it, just like you've done tonight. Too hard, too deep. It's you, it's me. Too hard, too sleep. Oh, yeah. One thing to need. Three words I speak when you're with me. Oh, come on, come on, how I cry. You know how much I care. Come on, come on, you know what I want now. Make me feel good. Hey, love on the run, love on the run, run. Do anything to be there, be there. And I always say your name like a prayer. Oh, when you touch me there. Please make some noise like that tonight. Oh, 
Thank you so much. Rita Ora, everybody. Rita Ora. And that's it. It's a wrap. The Invictus Game 2023. That's about it from Dusseldorf after a week to remember. who have been at their lowest, now they want to serve again. It's not about how many times you get knocked down, it's about how many times you get back up. The Invictus Games to me is telling the world that we are never beaten. If the, those guys can do it, then I can do it. It's great to have Invictus to be able to help us get back on our feet. Invictus Endeavor has opened my eyes to so many things. As a researcher, it's changing the landscape of what we see in terms of adapted sport. And with this, we get hurt. I get to spend more time with my dad. That's the most important thing. With the support of your family, your mates, and everybody here, we can do it! So Dusseldorf 2023 is finally over. What a week it's been. Dankeschön.